Hi, Tara. Before I begin, Mel Gibson is a total piece of shit. But unlike most people on Twitter, I can separate art from the artist. I still love the hell out of the Lethal Weapon films. Braveheart is an all-time classic. Mel Gibson is also an insanely good filmmaker as well. But sometimes you just see a trailer and you want to watch this film by any means necessary. That trailer is Batman, in which Gibson plays a grizzled Santa Claus frustrated with society who is being targeted by a 12-year-old James Bond villain in training that would make Artemis Fowl piss his pants. It's an idea that's so stupid and yet so awesome. Batman is basically if Zack Snyder directed Elf, and I mean that in the best way possible. Seriously, the elves live on Buddy the Elf's four food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. This film has ambitious ideas and a lot to say about who has truly been naughty or nice. I'm pretty sure the main reason this is getting trashed by critics is because Mel Gibson is in it. If this were, say, Hugh Jackman in this role, it would have a fresh tomato meter rating. With all that being said, this is Mel Gibson's best performance in years. It's rather interesting that the two biggest action heroes of the 80s are both portraying wildly different Santa Clauses. Gibson is the polar opposite of Kurt Russell's Kris Kringle. He's a Santa that is fed up with the world who is trying to stay afloat. That is actually a far more interesting take on Santa Claus than just Santa Claus being Santa Claus. Santa is getting screwed over by the government. The elves are working in a dark and dreary factory setting and not a Christmassy one. I also gotta give a huge shout out to co-writer and co-director Ian Nelms, who retweeted me and said Mel Gibson gave it his all. I believe that Gibson cared about this project. That in and of itself is pretty cool. Walton Goggins is also fantastic as the hitman hired to kill Santa Claus. He too has an issue with Santa Claus, and as the film progresses, you get why he is the way he is. Whereas Artemis Fowl pissed me off so much as I didn't get evil genius, but rather spoiled rotten rich kid, Chance Hirschfield's Billy is fucking terrifying. I truly believe he is going to be a serial killer when he grows up. Also, I really like the fact that Santa Claus has a black wife who is age appropriate. Marianne Jean-Baptiste is actually terrific as Rube Santa's wife. She has to be the one who gives Santa his Christmas cheer as he has become so jaded with the world. But my main issue with Fat Man is that it goes at a glacial pace. Most of Act 2 is just Walton Goggins dicking around. The film stops dead so that Goggins buys a hamster wheel for his hamster. You could tell most of the budget for this film went to Mel Gibson and they only had him for a week. So they had to pad the story out. <laughs> Honestly, I would have rather followed Billy. Sometimes a film just needs a medium budget. This needed at least $20 million behind it, as the budget constraints really show in scenes, specifically within the post office scenes. That's not a knock to the filmmakers, as they did the best they could given the circumstances. It's just me saying give more money to films like this. Fat Man is one of those films that is destined to be a cult classic. I can see people 10 years down the road talking about this film. This film has an all-time great Mel Gibson performance behind it and has some really great ideas. This may end up being a Blu-ray buy, but more importantly, support this film because it's awesome that Ian Nelms is responding to people on Twitter about this film. We need more filmmakers like this who take the time out of their busy schedules to do this. I seriously want to see what the Nelms Brothers do next, and I'm not just saying that because he liked one of my tweets on Twitter. I'm going to give Fat Man a 3.5 out of 5. Be sure to like, comment, share, spread the word on New Realms Media, follow me on all my socials at New Realms Media, and until then, I'll see you next time.